Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening. My name is David Smith, and today I would like to talk to you about an avenue we found for determining magnetic relaxation in iron alloys, as well as a confirmation of a new ultra-low damping reduced moment material in the form of iron vanadium alloys. So to start, there's an interest in developing materials that are not only low damping, but also possess a low moment for devices that undergo spin torque switching or oscillations. Now, the material iron is known to be the lowest damping ferro elemental ferromagnet, but it comes with a high moment. And in fact, the origins of Gilbert damping in that material have been well studied by our group, and you can learn more about that in this archive preprint here. Now, many previous studies have shown that alloying iron with cobalt reduces the damping to record low values in metallic systems, but it comes with an even higher moment. So it remains an open question of how do we reduce the damping in iron by doping the material with non-magnetic materials. So in order to reduce the Gilbert damping parameter, we need to know what it is largely dependent on. And previous studies have pointed to two major contributors to the Gilbert damping parameter, alpha. So the first of those is the spin orbit coupling, which is known to scale with the Z number. And what this group here did was they looked at iron palladium platinum alloys, and by varying the ratio of palladium to platinum, they're able to get this relationship between an intrinsic Gilbert damping parameter and the atomic spin orbit coupling energy. Now, the other major contributor to Gilbert damping is the density of states at the Fermi level. Now, what this group here did was they looked at uh, damping in cobalt iron alloys as a function of cobalt concentration and calculated the density of states at the Fermi level for those same cobalt concentrations, and noticed a correlation in the reduction of both of these at a certain cobalt concentration. So we want to know between these two major contributors, which of these plays a larger role in iron alloys with low Z number non-magnetic dopants. So in order to address this question, we started with pure iron, which has a Z number of 26, from there, we created iron vanadium alloys. Now, vanadium has a slightly smaller Z number than iron, 23. And we also created iron aluminum alloys, in which aluminum has a much smaller Z number in that of 13. So if we expect that spin orbit coupling is the dominant contributor in iron-based alloys, since the Z number of aluminum is much smaller than that of iron, we would expect the damping in iron aluminum alloys to be reduced greatly and the damping in iron vanadium alloys can only be slightly reduced due to a slightly smaller Z number than that of pure iron. However, this is not what we saw. In fact, we observed that due to a reduction in the density of states at the Fermi level, damping in iron vanadium alloys was reduced and damping in iron aluminum alloys was actually enhanced. Now we made these thin films using DC magnetron sputtering and we deposited the films on NGO substrates that were initially pre-annealed 600 degrees Celsius for two hours, and then held at 200 degrees Celsius for two hours. And at 200 degrees Celsius was the temperature at which the film deposition was done. We co-sputtered iron and vanadium or aluminum to two separate two-inch targets, and varied the alloy composition by varying the deposition rate. So in, in the end, we had films of a magnesium oxide substrate with 25 nanometers of iron vanadium or iron aluminum deposited at 200 degrees Celsius, and a capping layer of vanadium or aluminum deposited at room temperature in order to protect against any oxidation of the magnetic films. From there, we started with structural characterization of our films, and the epitaxial growth of iron films on magnesium oxide is well known, leading to this 45 degree rotation of the film with respect to the substrate. And our X-ray diffraction scans reveal that we do in fact have a single phase BCC structure in all of our films, confirming the epitaxial growth. From there, we performed ferromagnetic resonance experiments with the field initially applied within the plane of the film at room temperatures. And we looked at the total line width at a single excitation frequency. And from there, we, if we look at the total line widths, we can see that in iron vanadium alloys, the line width is reduced. 
compared to pure iron, and an iron aluminum alloy is aligned with is enhanced compared to pure iron. So if we do this for all concentrations of films we have, we can see that necessarily doping iron with lighter elements and reducing the Z number does not necessarily lead to lower magnetic relaxation. However, one thing we do want to note is that in our pure iron and iron vanadium films, our total line widths are reduced by about a factor of two when compared to previous iron vanadium studies. And we think this might be related to the substrate pre-annealing process we do, but that's beyond the scope of this study. Now, in order to gain insight into the Gilbert damping parameter, we performed FMR across a wide range of frequencies, and we did this for pure iron, for iron vanadium, and for iron aluminum. Now from there we perform a linear fit of line width versus frequency where the slope of that linear fit is related to a effective Gilbert damping parameter. Now we did this for all film concentrations and this is what we see for the effective damping parameter. So we can see that iron aluminum is showing higher effective damping than pure iron and the effective damping in iron vanadium is either slightly reduced or invariant compared to pure iron. Now, we're working with the magnetic field applied within the plane of the film, so there could be potential effects from tube magnet scattering. And we're wondering if this is dominating any intrinsic trend within the film. In order to suppress tube magnet scattering, we now work with the field applied perpendicular to the film. And we repeat the same experiments for pure iron, for iron vanadium, and for iron aluminum. And if we do the same linear fit of line width versus frequency, where now the slope is related to a intrinsic Gilbert damping parameter, we do this for all concentrations. This is what we see. And here we can see that the intrinsic damping parameter in iron aluminum is still enhanced compared to pure iron, but now iron vanadium is showing a clear reduction in intrinsic damping by about a factor of two for some concentrations compared to pure iron. And this trend agrees well with a theoretical study done a few years ago on damping in iron vanadium alloys. So we expected that since the Z number of aluminum is much smaller than that of iron, we would expect its damping in iron aluminum to be greatly reduced. However, in fact, what we're seeing is that the intrinsic damping parameter in iron vanadium is reduced compared to pure iron, and iron aluminum is enhanced compared to pure iron. So if the Z number is not a good predictor of Gilbert damping in these iron-based alloys, we need to look at the other major contributor to damping, which is the density of states at the thermal level. So we did this by having density of states calculations done for pure iron, for iron vanadium, and iron aluminum. And if we look at the magnitude of the density of states at the Fermi level, indicated by these double-ended arrows, we can see that the density of states at the Fermi level is reduced for iron vanadium and enhanced for iron aluminum. Now this trend is consistent with what we saw in the intrinsic Gilbert damping parameters. So this leads us to believe that the density of states at the Fermi level playing a larger role than the average Z number in magnetic relaxation in these iron-based alloys. To conclude, we observed that the intrinsic Gilbert damping parameter in iron vanadium alloys is reduced when compared to pure iron and enhanced in iron aluminum. Now we attribute this to a reduction in the density of states at the Fermi level for iron vanadium alloys and an enhancement for iron aluminum alloys. This suggests that the density of states is playing a larger role than spin-orbit coupling in these iron-based alloys. Now, this work also confirms iron-vanadium alloys as a ultra-low damping, reduced moment material that could be promising for future spin-torque devices in spintronic applications. Thank you.